This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome to the channel. This video is on atmospheric science playlist. We're looking at air masses today in this video and air masses are very important when looking at conditions of the atmosphere, wind direction and predicting changes to the weather over coming days or hours and analyzing the air mass is important to figure out conditions both with temperature and humidity. So the definition of an air mass is a uniform unit of air that originates from a certain geographic location on Earth and it has certain or specific characteristics relating to both water vapor and humidity, so how much water is in the air, water vapor is in the air, which would dictate again the water source or the heat for evaporation and obviously temperature which relates to then evaporation. So it's going to be a hot air temperature or a cold air temperature. So this unit of air has certain characteristics based on where it comes from. So it comes from a very large area that's hot and dry. The air is going to be hot and dry. If it's coming over a large ocean, it would be generally very wet, but depends on the temperature. So for example, if it comes off the Sahara or Sahara Desert, this air is going to be very dry, generally, and very warm. So the if you feel the air off the Sahara, let's say if you're in the Mediterranean or you're in Tenerife, then when the air comes over off the Sahara, it's going to be a different condition than if the wind or air mass comes off the Atlantic Ocean, which is going to be a lot colder and definitely a lot more humid and wet. So based on the definition of an air mass and based on certain locations, we can divide the air masses into their characteristics based on temperature and humidity, which is the amount of water vapor that is carried in the air. Now, warm air does carry more water vapor, there's more space in warm air because it spreads out, larger volume, and colder air can carry less water vapor. But you have the temperature in three separate divisions and humidity in two. Now, humidity is always given with the lowercase letters and temperature is given with the uppercase capital letters. So A, P and T, and then the small case of M and C. Now, what do these mean? So the temperature A, this is based on the Arctic. So anything around the Arctic would have this certain temperature. Then just below that, around the 50 to 70 degree latitude mark, you'd have the P, which is polar. And then T, which is anything further south in terms of the northern hemisphere, will be deemed tropical. So this is the temperature. So we can assume that the Arctic is very, very cold. Polar would be cold and tropical would be anything above cold. So anything above 50 to 60 degrees in Fahrenheit. So looking at anything that's going to be warm or above cold, so warm, hot, or in some cases very hot depends on where it is coming from. So humidity, again, is the amount of water vapor in the air. Now this relates to the potential for, uh, obviously, low pressure causing clouds and weather to form compared to high pressure, which is gonna be air that's descending that can't form weather or clouds, even with water vapor inside the air. So high pressure, it can't form clouds. It's low pressure, it has the potential to form clouds and have weather. So M, stands for maritime, which is ocean or water. So this air would potentially contain a lot of water, whereas the sea stands for continental, which is land, which will contain less water, potentially. Now, if it goes across a massive lake, the Great Lakes or Lake Superior, which looks like a huge ocean on the, if you're on the side of it, then it depends. But Continental just means that the air is coming over land, so there is less water to pick up compared to, let's say, it comes over the Pacific Ocean, which is huge. The potential for more water is far greater. So how do we write this? We combine the temperature and water. So, for example, if it's going to be an air mass that's very, very cold and dry, you would have the A for Arctic and the small c for continental. Or if it's really, really cold, but over water, like the Hudson Bay, perhaps it would be A for Arctic, being very, very cold, 
and the small m for maritime, which would dictate a lot of water. So you'd have very, very cold. If you saw this air mass, these letters, you know, it's very cold and it would contain either low humidity with the C or it would contain high humidity with the M. So we can tell where the air mass is coming from and what the conditions could be in terms of weather and if it's high or low pressure based on where the air mass is coming from so you can build that knowledge of the atmospheric conditions. So for the exercise in class, we have given you the air masses worksheet which has a similar diagram to what you're seeing here. This North American geographic map, this one's in color, you see both the Atlantic Ocean, over here on the right we have the left with Pacific, you see little islands of Hawaii right there, you have Alaska on the top left with Russia as well near it in the Bering Strait, we have the Canadian archipelago, all these islands up here in Canada and Greenland, so we know that North Pole's up here. We know the equator is down below the map, okay, around Brazil, actually where this, this line is. So we can put the equator down there. We have the North Pole, which is 90 degrees north up there. So we know that this would be the mid latitudes, you know, around 60 would be here and 30 would be around here. So we can relate this to our maps. And we can see also that if it comes off the ocean, we're gonna have that big maritime air mass it comes off the continents We're gonna have the sea which is very dry so wet and dry and we can see also based on latitude that we have our temperature we have our arctic air from the north pole in this area we have our polar air from the high latitudes above 60 and we have our tropical air that's coming from the tropics and up into the mid latitudes through the Hadley and Ferrell cells. The polar maritime air mass would be up around Alaska or off the coast of Canada and it look like this with a direction of wind going from the west to the east. This is westerlies. And we're looking at these air masses as if they're coming into the United States and how if the air comes into the United States or comes towards the United States from a certain area around it, what would be the air characteristics? This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.